Hey guys, how you doing? Oh man, once again, this is Polo Gold, praise one, love one, God only. And I got a good one for you guys today. Oh yes, remember the only reason why I could share this with you is because I'm living it. I either lived it, I'm living it, and I'm going to live it. And I know it's been a minute since I checked in with you guys, but welfare check. And no matter what I do, no matter where I go, I always have you guys in my mind. And I always got you guys in my prayers. Yes, yes. And before I continue, so once again, this is Polo Gold. Praise one, love one, God only. And I'm on a mission to bring hope to as many people and their families that I can. Starting with my own self. And then extending out to my immediate family, mom and dad. And then extending out to my family members. All the way from Florida, Guatemala, LA, Riverside, Walnut, Moreno Valley, Guatemala. And then extending out to the whole world and then throughout the whole galaxies and universe. Therefore, when I'm gone... I'm going to leave golden nuggets for you guys. For those that are come, coming after I am. In case they need something to lift them up. In, in case, so when they fall down, they can get up. So whenever they're out of focus, they can get back and fo back and get back into focus and refocus on the game plan so when there's a small distraction or something that's irrelevant or, or insignificant that arises that they'll be able to get back in focus and remain focused on the goal and the prize at hand which is our freedom which is our peace our inner peace and once again this would not be possible without without you father god Thank you, Father God, the Most High, my Creator, the Great I Am. Yes, the Alpha, the Omega, my Rock, my Refuge. And thank you to my Lord of Lords, my Lord and Savior, King of Kings, Jesus Christ. Yes, thank you, Jesus Christ, for the sacrifice that you paid on the cross. For when they crucified you, you gave your life for me. And that's how much love you have for me. And God, how much love you have for us for sending your son and incarnating yourself as Jesus Christ and coming on this earth and dying on the cross for us. And that's how much love you have for us. So for, for all my brothers right now, if you ever feel like no one loves you, Jesus loves you. If you ever feel lost, if you connect with Jesus Christ and God, you will be found. Okay, because once again... I am lost without you, God, but I am found with you, God. I am blind without you, God, and I can see clearly with you, God. Yes, and I pray that no matter what you're going through, that you reach up and look up and extend your arms wide open and ask God to guide you. Ask for his guidance and he will answer. If you need to call on the power of God, declare it and claim it. Like I've done. And I will continue to do it. And it works, you guys. Oh, it works. Yes. Yes. And uh, I also want to give a special shout out to my little brother in Florida. Faces. Got us. How you doing, B? I love you, bro. I love you too, man. I appreciate the phone call you gave me earlier, man. And I'm very proud of you. And I want to remind you that everything's going to be all right. And G Papa 95, I love you too. And I'm very proud of you. Keep it going, champ. And I want to remind you as well, everything's going to be all right. And Danny Felix, what's up, brother? My brother in Christ, I love you too, man. And you're right, iron sharpens iron. And Luis Angel Murillo, what's up, champ? There are no coincidences why I met you, little brother. And I love you too, and I'm very proud of you. And blessings to you and your mom and your family in Mexico. You guys be safe. And to all my family and all my subscribers, I want to share something with you that 
my brother Luis Angel Murillo shared with me. He sent me through Messenger a link today. And it's regards to a gentleman, a fellow soldier, a fellow prayer warrior, a brother in Christ. His name is Todd White. Once again, Todd White. Look him up. If you need me to, drop me a comment and I'll send you the link. Very powerful. Showing us with his testimony, his living testimony of how great God is. And how the changes that God can make through us. And how we can create something so marvelous, so beautiful through and with God only. All to glorify you, Father God. Oh, yes. And I want to remind all of my brothers and sisters. If you ever feel like you're lost. If you ever feel like giving up. If you ever feel like there's no hope. If you ever feel alone, misunderstood, if you've fallen down and you feel frustrated, let me remind you that Jesus loves you. God loves you. He's just asking you to, to look up, open your arms, and ask Him to come into your life. And if you need to call on God's Spirit and you call upon God's Spirit, He will come and He will be there. Yes, and he will come at the right time, always. It might not be on my time. It might not be on your time. But he will come, and it'll be on God's time, which is the perfect time, always. So, Father God, I want to pray for all my brothers and sisters that are hurting right now. For all my brothers that are sick, mentally, physically, or spiritually. For all my brothers that are lost. For all my brothers and sisters who are wandering out there for all my brothers and sisters who have problems in their relationship whether it be with themselves or maybe in a marriage matrimony or maybe with their girlfriends or boyfriends or with their neighbors or through our nations or the governments the politics the presidents for all my brothers and sisters that are in the, in the military for all my brothers and sisters that are locked up in physical prisons or maybe mental prisons. And for all my brothers that leave their houses, come with us, guide us, and allow us to do what we need to do throughout each day. And when we're done, allow us to come back to our homes safe and sound. Yes, Father God. And thank you for this day of preparation that you have given me and all of us. I like to look at it as training day. Yes. And I ask this, in the most holiest and highest name of all, Jesus Christ, amen. Yes. And once again, I like to look at this this day, every day that I'm blessed to wake up, every second, every moment, every day, as training day, as a character building day. Uh, whatever adversities comes my way, uh, it's for me to grow from it, to grow and go through it so I can come out of it and glow and shine and bright and shine so bright like a supernova all to glorify you father god and um sometimes when i speak i feel when i say that it's all in preparation people might not understand me and um i'm gonna go ahead and just talk to you guys and share with you guys preparation and what i mean that it's all in preparation and once again i'm here my flag is planted i'm not going nowhere and um I can make videos every day, but I like to like live my day. And then as I go through stuff, then share with you guys. Because uh, first of all, I got to kill my ego. Second of all, I have to live and go through my own trials. And then call on the power of God. Lean on his understanding and not mine. And, uh, and then come back and share with you guys, which is real. You know, it's not rehearsed. It's not written down. This is live and in living color. Um, so, talking about preparation. Okay, you guys. Um, so, here on this plane, on this earth, on this dimension, it's like training camp or boot camp or training day, right? And depending on how we look at things 
and how we perceive things will determine our outcome, right? My perception will always determine my performance. If I'm looking at things like, oh man, why me? Or, oh, what? Again? Or, oh man, oh man. Then I'm not going to be attacking it and grabbing it by the horns. Grabbing the bull by the horns. But instead, I'm going to be like, hmm. Going at it, not boldly. Not courageously, but being filled with fear and being stuck. The reason why I can say this, you guys, is I'm going to share this with you guys and I'm going to be honest with you guys. And all I want to do is be able to reach one of my brothers and sisters out there, one of them, and then help you rise, help you realize that you're not alone and give you some kind of peace and build you up. And then with your help, let's build others up, right? So here we go, you guys. Um... So now we're reaching towards the end of November. Thanksgiving just passed. How was your Thanksgiving? You know, were you complaining? Uh, were you being negative? Believe me, a lot of people were. I know they were. I really don't understand. I can't see why uh, someone would be negative. But, you know, it happens. And it's their prerogative. And they're entitled to feel however they want to feel. I choose not to. Right? Once again, God, thank you. For without you I am lost, but with you I am found. God, thank you. For without you I am blind, and with you I can see clearly. Thank you, Father God. Okay, so now we're going to be coming into December, right? And um, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And we're going to bring, bring in 2021 with a bang, and it starts now. That's why I always say it's all in preparation. But let me be a little bit more specific so maybe you can relate. And maybe you can see, oh, okay. But if not, it's okay. You know, I understand. Um, so up to this point, um, it's all been in preparation. And what I mean is this. Um, I got married at a young age. I got my ex-wife pregnant and um, I wasn't prepared, man. I wasn't mentally prepared. Yeah, I was 18 years old and I was in an adult body, but my mind was not mentally prepared. Um, I needed benefits, medical benefits for my child, unborn child and for my ex-wife. We weren't married at a time. So then I decided to go into the Navy, right? I decided to go into the military. Right, and uh, I passed boot camp. Right, and that was fun, man. That that was fun. It was a, a great experience, and it was all in preparation for where I'm at at this point in my life now. Okay, you guys. Um, I passed boot camp, came back, got married. I went back, showed them my marriage certificate. Then they were added to my medical benefits, and then prenatal care and all that good stuff. Right, then my baby was born. I ended up at the Persian Gulf. Um, when I left here, I went from here to Vegas, to Vegas, to Pennsylvania, from Pennsylvania to Spain, Italy, and then from there to Bahrain, over there by Kuwait, right? And I, we stayed up in a Holiday Inn, right? And then we were waiting to be taken in a Hilo, which is a huge helicopter, and uh, be dropped off on top of my boat. And I was on a USS CVN-70 Carl Benton. Huge, immensely huge, beautiful aircraft carrier. Oh, my God. Beautiful. So I, when we, we took off on the Hilo, when I landed, I was in the Persian Gulf. And that was a neat experience, man. And then I was there for a couple months. And then when I came back, I, I finally met my daughter. She was born. They threw her in my arms. And I was like, whoa, this is neat, right? Okay, you know, so then... My military career came to a brief end, and that was due to drinking, drinking alcohol. Because once again, I wasn't prepared, right? I wasn't prepared mentally. Yeah, I did boot camp. Yeah, I was in the military. Yeah, I'm a military. I'm a veteran of the military. Uh, yes, I, I, I. Your freedom was so well worth it. Okay. Yes, I did that, but I wasn't mentally mentally prepared. 
my frame of mind was not prepared okay okay so when we came back um within three months we got our own little apartment and stuff like that but my by that time uh i wasn't doing things the right way man i wasn't and i'll be the first to admit it so my ex-wife was cheating on me then she separated from me and then we got divorced i actually caught her as well um and you know what it's okay it's okay you know what i mean i wasn't the man that i should have been right you know and i take responsibility responsibility for my part in it right and if it's an end or a dissolvement of a marriage well that's okay but i'm still a father right and i'm a great father right and uh so i was okay with that right but then in 2007 i lost all my rights to my daughter okay you guys and that killed me oh my god that killed me oh mg that killed me I felt this huge void, oh, inside, oh, around here, way over here, deep, deep in my heart, in my soul, huge void. And then it was on, you guys. I ran amok. And uh, in my family, the Hispanic family, Latinos, uh, there was always alcohol, right? And so I've always been drinking, like at a young age and stuff. But it got heavy, you know, at, in high school, right? And then in the military, right? But when I lost my daughter, it got even worse, right? And from 2007 all the way till about 2011, July, July 10th, 2011 on my birthday. Um, that's when I realized that there was something wrong. And from that point in time, in between that time, I was living a disorderly life. I didn't have no personal relationship with God. Needless to say, I didn't have a personal relationship with myself. I steered away, I tried to hide away, I tried to do things my way, my way, my way, my way. I was living a life of self-destruction, chaos and misery, right? I was going to county jails in two different counties. <laughs> I went to prison a couple times and all for DUIs, you guys, not for no crime. Uh, uh, not for robbery, mass slaughter, nothing like that, just for DUIs. But if I would have kept going in that same route, I probably would have killed somebody driving drunk. So then I would have been there for mass slaughter, right? Um, and then what ended up happening in July 2011, the doctors told me that I'm legally blind. Okay? They told me that I, I have diabetes. Okay? They told me that my kidneys were shot. They were enlarged six to seven times the normal size of normal kidneys. So I was slowly dying. I was spiritually dead already. And I was slowly killing myself. Okay. And then after they told me that, it didn't really hurt me. Yeah, I cried a little bit, but it didn't compare to losing my daughter. Or losing the rights to my daughter okay uh, but I still kept going you guys I was going in and out of rehabs the last place I went to was a men's ministry called Barber Tabernacle in Santa Clarita uh, California Canyon uh, Santa Clarita California I think they're closed now but I'm so grateful that I was I was able to go there um, I left there and then in a little bit, a couple months later, I left there in I think May. May 2012. And then soon after that, I got back on a bench, on a sick bench. And then September 22nd, 2012, a couple months after I left the men's ministry. I was involved in something in which it wasn't my fault. I was a passenger in the back seat of a car and the driver, I've never met him before. That was the first time I met him. And supposedly he was Mr. Badass, but when it came down to it, he blamed me. So they took me and here I go again. And there was no way that I could have been driving that day because 
I don't drive. I have a car right now. It's parked in front of my house right here. I don't drive it. I haven't been driving for, I think since 2007, you guys. Um, but that day, that night they took me and I was pretty banged up. I almost died. I went from the back seat of the car in between two of the seats, the driver's seat and the uh, driver's side passenger seat in between them, like a torpedo, straight into the windshield. And I was stuck in the windshield. And thank God my neck didn't crack, you guys. I guess my body was limp. I guess I was so drunk. Uh, my body, my neck didn't crack, you guys. And a buddy of mine that was there with me, he thought I, I was dead. The driver just left, came back, grabbed the CDs, and he left again. And uh, the buddy that was there with me, way younger to do the dude than me, but he he thought I was dead. And I came to, and I was like, man. And then we just started running. I don't know where I was running, but anyways, the police came, and the driver blamed it on me. And then they took me because of my criminal record and the wreckage of my past. And then I was waiting. I had to get a lawyer. It cost me 10 Gs. Almost cost me my life. Almost cost me my freedom. And while I was waiting, that's when I got on my knees and I said, Father God, I'm done. I'm done doing it my way. I need you. I, I, I like your plan better. My plan leads to nowhere fast, but your plan leads to happiness, everlasting happiness peacefulness uh yes trials will come but you're with me and you're my refuge and you're my rock and no matter what comes my way nothing can stop me because i am blessed and unstoppable as long as i'm guided by you father god and that's when i turn my 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 will and my ways over to the care of god and that's when my personal relationship with with god started and that's when i started to value the personal relationship with god okay and then that's when I started to have a personal relationship with myself and to value it, okay? And that was eight years ago. Eight years ago and one month and three days. No, eight, year, eight years ago, one month and five days. But really to me, it's just been eight days because I like to think of one year as 365 mini days, M-I-N-I -I days, mini days. And when it's one year, to me, it's just one day so that I don't ever forget, right? Okay, so the reason why I'm sharing this to you is, okay, so now we're at the present moment. And what I've been doing since 2012 is every day when I wake up, I give myself to God. The Lord is my shepherd. Take me, make me, build me as you see fit. Father God, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. But as long as I'm following you, God, I don't need to worry about where I'm going because I'm following you, God. God, no matter what comes my way, no matter, no matter what I'm going through, I trust you. I love you. I appreciate you. I need you. I'm in love with you. Take me, make me, build me, mold me as you see fit, Father God. And that's what I claim. That's what I declare. And that's what I call out. And, and it's a ritual, you guys. I've been doing that since then. And working out, man. Once again, on, on Instagram, on my IG, my my bio it says, "An active mind and body allows me to heal heal my emotions through exercise. I exercise all my demons. Next level, champ. Blessed and unstoppable." So since 2012, when God allowed me to come out of that situation. I start plugging to, into him every day and he's been preparing me for what's coming. And that's why I say every day is in preparation. Okay, you guys. Now I'm going to be a little bit more specific and take this deeper. Okay, so Thanksgiving Day. This past week, today is Saturday. On Tuesday night. I get a text from my mom and she says, don't come home, have Corona. And um, like David Goggins says, I'm working out and I'm working out my mind and I'm, and I'm fighting my demons in my mind. So when I get that phone call or I get that text, I'm not gonna break down. 
And I learned this in the Navy. And I learned this when I was in, going in prison. And it's crazy because the same uniform I, I, I was using in the Navy, dungarees and blue shirts and white shirts, same in prison, right? It was all in preparation, right? So I got that text, don't come home, I have corona. I said, oh man, I didn't break down, I just started praying, right? So I didn't come home, right? So then Thanksgiving Day came. And when Wednesday night, the day prior, I was like, man, this is different, man. Wow, this is really going to be different now. What am I going to do? And I started, I started going through the emotions, you guys. I started feeling the emotions, you guys. Oh, man, I started feeling these emotions, you guys. I started crying. I started feeling panicky. I started feeling anxious, uh, mm, out of place, you guys. But all these years that I've been suffering, proving every day in every way, it was now time for me to apply those spiritual tools that I've been equipping my tool belt with. And what I started doing was praying and walking around and praying and praying and walking around and praying and the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And I'm praying and praying and I'm walking and I'm calling on the power of God's Spirit to fall upon me. And it did, just like I feel it right now, you guys. Okay? So I'm checking in with my mom throughout the days on Wednesdays and then Thursdays, talking to her briefly because she could, you know, she's coughing a lot and she has headache, major headache, right? But I'm touching bases and with her, right? Uh, uh, and I'm talking to her, right? And my dad's taking care of her, right? So let's go back a couple months, September 6th, I believe, Labor Day weekend, Sunday. Now, on Sunday, the day prior to Memorial Labor Day, my dad had a heart attack and I was here to help him. And if I was out there running amok, if I wasn't with God, I wouldn't have been here and he would have died, right? So now a couple months later, what's that? November, uh, now my mom is going through it, right? So once again, we're here on borrowed time, right? So now I can't be selfish. I have to be selfless, right? So then Thanksgiving Day comes and I'm like, hmm, this is very different. Hmm, okay. So then this idea came into, into my mind because every day I plug into God. I, I sink in. I link up with God as my rituals throughout the morning go about because as soon as I get up I just start praying and start exercising I start breaking down I start programming and I plug into God and I, I tell him send me all the messages that you want today and I'm going to listen to them I'm open minded and I'm going to learn all the lessons that today has to offer and I'm not going to forget the lessons that I learned in the past and apply them from today right so then on Thanksgiving day this uh, message came to me in my mind hey I'm going to use the app what's up the what's app What's up app? And I'm going to do video calls. Right? And I don't know if you guys know, but you can add up to eight people on a video conference call using What's up. So what I did, I called my sister who's in Guatemala in a totally different country. She's worried about mom. I called my brother. I called my other brother. I called my dad. I called my mom. I called as many people. Oh, my niece. I called as many people that I could. And we were all on a call with mom. Sending vibrations of love and peace and, and healing to her from God. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. Oh, yes. And we're rebuking the enemy because he has no power in this house. You guys, he has no power in this physical house or in this house, this temple right here. You guys. Oh, no, none, none. The giants are big, but my God is bigger. The struggle is big, but my God is bigger. Mama didn't raise no quitter. And now, since I, I choose to live selfless, and yes, I go through it, you guys. Yes, I fall short. Yes, yes, yes. But there's better days now than worse days before because I'm not drinking. I'm living an orderly life. I actually remembered that I went to the Navy and I'm applying those skills in my present life. I'm actually remembering that I went to prison and I was manning up right there and I was living an orderly life and I'm applying that to now. I have a personal relationship with God, my Lord, my Lord, my, my, my creator, the most high, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. And I value that and I value myself, right? Okay, so then, um, Thursday, I was feeling kind of cold, you guys. I, I, 
I was washing the car where I was at, and I was like, I feel kind of cold. So after Thanksgiving, which was two days ago, I get dropped off at the hospital because I'm not being selfish. I'm going to be selfless, and I'm going to get tested. I'm going to confront this, take the bull by the horns. Because if I was back in the day, I would not have cared. And I've been drinking, talking about why me, oh, why, why? But this has been all in preparation to make me stronger mentally. Yeah, I could bench 230 pounds. Yeah, I could do pull-ups. Yeah, I could do dips. Yeah, I could do curls. Yeah, I lost I lost a, a great significant amount of weight, healthy, health-wise. But it's in the mind. And I'm fighting and it's the fight of my life and for my life because my soul, my peace of mind, my health, my well-being, my mental state of mind, my peace of mind, my soul is on the line. So I have to fight you guys. And what I say, I'm not just saying hot air or throwing out or dispensing hot air to you guys. I'm telling you guys how it is. Don't do it how I do it. Take what you can, apply it to your life and create it because yes, you can. So I'm at the hospital, it's about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night It's about 50 some degrees I'm in there with my beanie With my, with my jacket, my gloves Because I'm freezing you guys And I know my body's talking to me The same way my body talks to me So does my subconscious So does my spirit So does the Holy Spirit talk to me And it's telling me go get checked So I do my exam Right They send me home I get the call the next day which was yesterday and I'm positive, right? But I don't really want to say that word because I don't want to give it power, okay? But I'm positive. So now I come back home and I'm in my room, quarantine. And when I started these videos back in April, I think, or June or something like that in 2020, I think it was maybe March, May, I don't know if it was May, June or something like that, 2020. It was to bring hope to as many people and, those, and their families out there because a lot of people were, were living in fear. I didn't know I was doing that for, to help myself as well. Because by me helping you, it's helping myself. It's keeping me in check. Right? So now I'm going to continue to put out these videos. Because it's all for a purpose with a process And a process with a purpose that I've fallen in love with Because I'm going to be alright Because there's no weapon formed against me that shall ever prosper Because I could do anything and everything through Jesus Christ that dwells within me And I declare that God's spirit of healing dwells within me When I wake up, I say I'm healthy When I lay down, I say I'm healthy When I'm laying down, I say I'm healthy And I don't lay down all day I haven't laid down all day I get up I make my bed I occupy myself. I'm walking around right here in the room and I'm doing what I got to do. Playing with my guitar, uh, writing some music, drinking tea, eating right, listening to good stuff. T.D. Jakes, Joe Austin, Raul Reese, Joyce Myers, the channel of Lions of Judah, Eric Thomas, Les Brown, Jim Ron, Tony Robbins, Miles Monroe, Earl Nightingale, John Maxwell. Okay, you guys? Because if I've been doing this this whole time, it was all in preparation for this moment right now and for what is to come. And that's how it's going to be because it's going to be all right. Like I've told you guys before, I am blessed and unstoppable to God be the glory. It's in the bag. Oh, yes. And since I'm not going to live selfish, I'm going to come back to the pad, lock myself up in my room. What? 10, 14 days? Write it out. Create music. Create poems. Spoken word style. Lean on God's understanding because when I am weak, He makes me strong through my weakness and in my weakness. Because there's no weapon formed against me that shall ever prosper. The giants are big, but my God is bigger. Yeah, words are words, but it's time for implementation. And whatever idea I conceive and believe, I will achieve. And that's how it's going to be. And then what happens, you guys? My mom has peace. Because I'm not out there drinking, being an idiot. 
My dad has peace because I'm not out there drinking and being an idiot and acting like an idiot and adding more stress. But I am maintaining. And then when I get out of this, it's taught to glorify God and give a living testimony of how great God is. And then take whatever adversity comes my way, take it by the horns, take the bull by the horns, conquer it, and get prepared for the next adversity and conquer that. And that's just how it's going to be. So how are you doing? Are you all right? You still feel down and out? Huh? I don't think so. There's no time to waste, you guys. We're here on borrowed time. We're going to be all right. It's in the bag. It's all in preparation. So when I get up, I still do the same thing that I got to do. Just clear my mind and plug back in and make it happen. Because through God and with God, anything's possible. With that being said, you guys, much love. Blessings to all you guys. We're going to be okay. Oh, yes. We were, we were spoiled rotten before reading the Bible. And we're like, oh, look what he did with Noah. Oh, look, look what he did with King David. Oh, look what he did with King Solomon. Oh, look what he did with Daniel. Oh, look what he did with Peter, Paul, Saul, and everybody. Now it's our turn to demonstrate our true faith and our character because these are just character building moments. Are we going to break down and fold and complain about negative stuff, insignificant, irrelevant stuff? Or are we going to man up and be the men of Christ and women of Christ that we were born to be? With that being said, you guys, feel free to follow me on Instagram under OG space Polo, P-O-L-O space G-O. And once again, this is Polo Go. Praise one, love one, God only. And I'm on a mission to bring hope to as many people and their families that I can. Let's get it done, you guys. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go.